Hey guys, Lucy here from By Lucy Designs. Just wanted to do a little tutorial on making, well, I say tutorial. It's gonna be me having a go at making a roll of uh, polymer clay with different colors and see what happens. So I hope you like this journey <laughs> with me. Um, and we can maybe work it out together. Uh, so the things that I've got today to use are this, uh, I've just, it's basically just a silicon sheet and I actually got it from Sainsbury's. Um, it's actually a baking mat, which is silicon um, and it's flexible, it's non-stick and apparently it's reusable and you can put it in your dishwasher. So I thought I'd give it a go because every time I've rolled clay out recently, I've been doing it with non-stick paper and it sticks to the paper. So um, I thought I'd give this a go. So, and then this one is an acrylic rolling pin, um, which I also got from Sainsbury's because there was one in Hobbycraft that was basically the same as this, but it's 10 pound. But I got this one from Sainsbury's for six. So save your pennies where you can, I guess. Um, so I've got my cutting tool, which I got in a kit from Hobbycraft. Um, it was just the PBO Gido modelling tools. Um, and you get a variety of different things in there. And then I've got some pre uh, Primo Sculpey clay, which I've just ch uh, cut three chunks off of, um, just to have a little look. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm probably going to give this a little bit of kneading to warm it up a little bit because apparently it works better when it's warmer, but it's already pretty warm here, so we'll see. <laughs> um, for you, you, those of you not in the UK, um, we're having a bit of a heat wave at the moment. Uh, on the verge of a hosepipe ban, so um, we will see how that pans out. But what we need is a good storm. So it's all about staying inside and keeping cool at the moment. So let's give this a bit of a roll. Stick into my roller, but not as bad as the other roller I got the other day. rolling it out, rolling it out. Keep rolling. Okay, so that's probably as thin as I want to go with that one. Okay, go for the white. That's crumbly already. Let's warm it up. So I got my Primo Sculpey clay. I was looking everywhere for it. Um, okay, so we've had some colour contamination there, but that's okay, that's fine. Um, so I was looking everywhere for Primo Sculpey and the only polymer clay that I could find in the shops around near me, um, it's not to say it's not sold in shops anywhere else, but um, all I could find was the Fimo clay. Um, and that's okay, but this seems a little bit of a better quality and it's not getting sticky quite so quick. Um, now I got this from craftmill.com. Um, they're really, really good. And, you know, each block, so each block this size, so 57 grams, two ounces is pound eighty-two. So that's really, really good. So let's give this a bit of a flatten. Okay. Probably want to fold that one in half because we're aiming for the same sort of size and shape as the crimson. Probably a little bit thin, so if we fold it, give it a bit of a mush, and 
roll it. Cool. Again, a little bit thin on the edges, so we'll just... So what I really want to get eventually um, is a pasta machine, because apparently that is really, really good for flatting, flattening out your clay. But just a little bit more into my uh, my my other life. Um, I'm getting married in October, so budget's a bit tight at the moment. So I'm just trying to get my designs going um, without spending a huge amount of money. Um, just to try and get a few more things on my Etsy store to try and sell. Um, you guys, obviously, um, you know, some of you may know, weddings aren't cheap. Um, put wedding at the beginning of any sentence and you'll probably find it's about three times the price it was going to be before you told them it was for your wedding. So, yeah. I mean, this clay, I'm, I'm already really, really impressed because it's not sticky, it's rolling out really nice, it's just lovely to work with. And I mean, I've not been working with clay very long, but already I can tell you this is much, much better than the Fimo stuff. Um, but then again, it is your per it is personal preference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to layer these. I think that's how you do it. So rolling them all together. This is essentially all that a pasta machine would do, is just roll them together. So it's just sticking them all together in a big, big flat pancake. And then, you guessed it, we're going to roll it up. So, let's get this end, and we're just going to start rolling. It's already looking really good. Cool. Give it a bit of a bit of a smush. Flatten these ends off. This is helping to warm the clay up as well. You can see it's it's already making a nice spiral. These colours work really well together. So let's get our cutting tool and we're gonna cut. Oh yes, beautiful. Look at that. So we've got a little hole in the middle, but we can just smush that together and make it really, really cool, like that. Oh, this is amazing. I don't think I would have got this with the Fimo play. So, I'm just gonna roll this out. Roll, roll, roll. Awesome, look, we've got some, oh, beautiful. Look at that. So that would look amazing, probably with some resin on the top, um, just to sort of dome it. And actually, I think that would make a really, really nice um, pendant. Um, 
put a hole in it with my Dremel. That would work really, really well, I think. So nice and plain on the back. So we're not losing any, any detail by having that as the back. Super duper. Cool, so that's one. This is what I was aiming for today, guys. So let's have another couple of slices with the roll like this. And then what we can do, I'll do those in a minute. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll these up and just smush it together. Just like that. So again, this warms it up, smushes it all together. And then we'll see how that comes out. So you can see we've got two little, little bits there, but that looks really, really cute. So I mean, they only need to be, you know, little, they don't need to be massive. So I think what we'll do is we'll smush that together. Smush that one up there and give it a bit of a roll. Give it another smush together. Give it another roll. Okay, let's see what these look like. Oh, wow, look. Epic. Okay. Well, I'm going to carry on doing this and then I will catch you all back here in a minute. Hey guys, um, so I'm back. I've managed to make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 from that block. Now they, they are a bit thin and I don't think they're going to cook and stay solid. So what I'm going to do is I've just rolled out a bit of white just to see what happens. So what I need to do, I think, is potentially, I think I'm gonna see if I can cut these out um, and try and sort of just make them a bit neater. And then we're going to put them in the oven and see what happens. Now I know that I've got to bake them in the oven um, between 15 and 30 minutes. I'm just going to go with a guess and say these probably aren't going to need a full 30 minutes. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm just going to cut the cut the edges off make a little scrap clay pile here now this one's a bit thin so I'm not convinced that's gonna work but I may put it on that bit because that bit sort of all blended together so if I pop that on there that might make a thicker one and actually that might not need a backing then. So that's good. So what we'll do is we'll try and just smooth this out a little bit. We can always sand it off later because I think you can sand polymer clay, can't you? Um, the nice thing about using white is that we've used it in the log roll so actually we can kind of make it look a little bit as if it's supposed to be like that and i'm just going to give it a quick roll smooth out those edge bits okay and then take it off so you can see that it's still quite thin but actually it was thicker it's thicker now than it was so the the nice thing about this mat is i can just stick it straight in the oven because it's a, a it's essentially a sort of a, a 
a cake making silicon baking mat. It's a baking mat, so I can definitely put it in the oven. randomly talking to myself I mean this mat says do not cut on it but I'm using wooden tools so I'm guessing it's probably going to be okay I mean I used this to cut the clay but they were still in the packet so I'm not sure how it would stand up to like a craft knife or anything so you might want to put um, like a, a craft mat underneath sort of a, a rehealing one self-healing um, craft mat which I've got a couple of upstairs um, but I thought I'm not going to be doing a huge amount of cutting today because it's it's just about working you know working out how this clay handles and how it how it moves and sort of how it gets sticky and I mean this is starting to get a little bit sticky but it's nowhere near as sticky and goopy as the Fimo is so actually and I mean I'm, I'm not I'm I'm not an advocate for um I'm, I, I'm not like a I'm not marketing um for Sculpey clay um and I'm not you know saying anything bad about Fimo but I'm, I'm just sort of you know if I'm comparing the two the Sculpey is actually a lot easier to work with and I think um, for the types of things that I want to do with it, this is the way to go. I mean, there are a lot of different polymer clays on the market, um, uh, but this, obviously, I've taken on a recommendation um, from another YouTuber. They use it in all of their work um, and you know they get some really really nice effects with it so I'm gonna um, give this a really good go and well I, I need to because like I've bought like eight packets of the stuff so I've got to use it at some point um, so I'm gonna be hope depending on how these come out I'm gonna hopefully um, put some doming resin on the top of these and then I'm going to um, possibly do some wire wrapping. Oh yeah, that's another thing I've, I've started recently. I've started doing a little bit of wire wrapping because it gives you a lot more freedom with the shape of your pieces. And when you take stuff to craft markets, which I have again recently started doing, um, you get a lot more freedom with things like saying I made this myself and you you know you're not lying because you did make it yourself but it's about advertising that fact and making sure that people know that you made this start to finish and you didn't just go out to a store and buy it and I mean there's absolutely nothing wrong with going out to a store and buying beads and putting them together absolutely not but I think it just gives you that, you know, you've got a little bit more of an edge if you've actually made the thing start to finish. And people, you know, hopefully would be willing to pay a little bit more for that because, you know, it has been made directly by you um, and not by somebody else. But you know, the way the, the way the market's going at the moment, you know, people aren't willing to pay the money for the handcrafted stuff, which is sad really, because it's, it's, it's dying out and, you know, and it, it's, it's such good therapy for, you know, loads of people. I mean, you know, I've had my own struggles and I'm not going to go into that now, but I found that it's really, really dug me out of a hole. And, you know, if people are going to pay me for that, then, you know, I'm going to grab it with both hands. So going back to this. So what I've done is I've backed one, two, three, four, five, um, five with white, one with the bit of uh, clay that's sort of all mold meshed together. That one's probably a bit thicker, so that one should be okay. Now these ones are a little bit thinner, so what I'm going to do, 
no I'm not I'm just going I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave them and see how they bake I think no I'm not ignore me right so I'm gonna cut a little bit more clay so you get to see how I cut this so I leave it in the packet so I'm trying to protect my mat I mean this isn't particularly sharp but it's great for cutting clay uh, so how many have we got? One, no, that one's done. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'll probably do about that much. Yeah. So it's probably about an eighth of a block. Um, I can see I'm going to have to get a lot more of this, especially like your base colours. I might get some black in my next order from Craft Mill, actually. Um, but, you know, they're really reasonable and actually it was really, really fast. I um, bought this two days ago. I mean, it's my first order with them and I've been actually really, really impressed with them. Um, and, you know, so I have got a little bit of the, the of the pink coming through. I think it's probably on my fingers. Um, but actually, because it's the same colours as is in these, it means that it doesn't really matter too much and it just looks as if you've sort of added that effect to the back of your design, which is really, really cool. Because it gives it a little bit of a marbled effect as well. So that's the other thing with this mat. Because of the, the crisscross design, you do it does come up on your, your clay. So you just have to sort of keep turning it over. Um, but obviously bear in mind that you are probably going to get that pattern on your design at the back when you bake them. patting them on, trying to get the most use out of my clay to not have to necessarily roll it all out again. That won't fit on there but once I've cut these out um, and manage to reshape that the rest of that white clay. So please, if you like this video and you want to see more, um, I'm only starting out on YouTube, so it would be fantastic to hear from some of you guys, any ideas, any tips that I, you may have for me. Um, you know, if, even if you're a fellow YouTuber, um, send, send me how you started out. I'd, I'd really like to know. Um, you know, I've learnt so, so much from various people. But again, another, it, you know, one of my main inspirations for, for, getting off my bum and doing this was Yvonne Williams and I mean yes she's over in the USA but you know she's in my living room every day why isn't she in yours um and she's not asked me to sponsor her page she's not asked me to plug her page either but I just think she is you know really really amazing kind human being so Go over to her channel, give her a like, give her a subscribe. Um, but, you know, make sure you come back to me eventually. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm just making sure that all the edges are nice and smooth. Um, like that. And then we need to roll this out again. Picking all the scrap clay up. And then we're going to roll it out. Reminds me of a little bit of chewing gum when it's all white. Okay. So we need to get sort of an oblong. 
wrong shape. Awesome. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the scrap clay um, to one side. Probably put it in my box because this clay doesn't dry out. And if it does, you can just warm it up and your hands can even add a little bit of water to it. Um, and that should work as well. So, you know, roll it up into a ball, make sure you keep all your scraps, you know. Cost effective, yes. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll do another video um, and show you how all these came out. So I'm gonna go and bake these now and then I will come back and I will show you how they all came out. That will probably be tomorrow.